welcome to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. I hope you're having a wonderful Monday evening. Mine is off to a great start because I am just so happy for the guests we have this evening on the show. Uh, you must be having a heck of a Monday evening since today is Tuesday, but go ahead. <laughs> oh my goodness, yes, today is Tuesday. You only <laughs> off that one day. Go ahead, go ahead. We <laughs> ain't noticed. I appreciate that. Time is <laughs> going by so fast. I just forgot. <laughs> I just forgot the interview I did with Frida Payne on Monday. Time is going so fast. I love Frida Payne and her mm -hmm. sister. They're oh just my goodness. wonderful. She's wonderful so phenomenal. But yes. the Sherrod Show is brought to you by Essence TV. This is the new television network for the Sherrod Show. Download it on your Roku or as well as your Amazon Fire Stick, and you can watch the Sherrod Show wherever you go. It is also brought to you okay. by iHeartRadio, ladies and gentlemen. You can see the Sherrod Show or hear it on our podcast on iHeartRadio. So if you miss it on nice. You can now listen to it on iHeartRadio. What this gentleman oh, here? Good to have so many ways to miss you. It's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> this gentleman here has is a legend in the comedy industry. He's an actor. He's an thank author. you, sir. He's he he does it all. He he's been in some of the funniest movies. He's our Chicago's very own Mister the Legendary Mister Michael Collier. How are you, sir? Man, I am super califragilisticexpialidocious. If I was doing any better, I would think it was a setup. <laughs> well, Mike, you know, last time you were on the show, you had written a book, and that book was so funny. It was about Obama, and you would uh, rate, rat and rave so much about our great president. But now we're in 2020 in one of the most chaotic, weirdest years ever that we call it, well, I call it, I had to laugh to keep from crying. Do you share that sentiment, uh, Mike, being 2020? Not at all. A lot of people are having a bad 2020, but I am having the time of my life. You know, I think it doesn't matter what happens to you. What's important is how do you deal with it? You know, COVID is here and it's very real. I think it's a world set. I think it's a reset for the entire world. So the COVID is resetting our health. You know, if you just keep building your immune system, you don't have to worry about no COVID. You got to keep on uh, drinking ginger root tea, taking black seed oil, echinacea and golden seal, garlic, vitamin D, zinc. Just take all the basic things that build your immune system and then stay away from them people who got it. You know what I'm saying? I get 72 masks. I wear a mask all the time. Sometimes I wear a mask in bed, me and my woman, she don't know who she in bed with. I wash my hands. <laughs> I wash my hands 30, 40 times. Every time I walk out this house and come back in, I wash my hands. If I touch too much stuff in this house, I wash my hands. You know what I'm saying? I don't play. And you got to keep your mask. When you're wearing a mask, the mask has got to cover your nose. If they wear it like this, the mask is not on. If the mask is under your nose, that's like having your drawers don't work, okay? It don't work. So mm -hmm. I do all the stuff to protect myself, and I stay healthy, but it's a reset. It's a reset for our finances. If you didn't have your finances in place before this hit, you in trouble. Mm -hmm. I've been out of work since March 13th, brother, and so I've been making other things work instead, you know? It's a reset for, for racism, you know, because what they did to George uh, Floyd made even white folks go, oh my God, are we doing that? You know, so now that, so we're woke to we're awake to a whole lot of things we've been sleeping on. So now all you do is be focused, be planned, and we can still make our lives be rich and vibrant and full of light and joy. And that's what I do every day, especially on my morning show, the Michael Kaya Morning Show. That's every every Sunday, I mean, every morning, uh, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's over on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Show you my sand. <laughs> the Michael Kaya Morning Show every morning, and please ignore the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are some of the things you talk about on your morning show, Mike? Everything, brother. It depends on... But it depends on what day we're doing. Like every day, my show is designed so you'll have a place where you can come every day and laugh and pray. That's our main thing, is that you laugh and play. I have an awesome, funny sidekick named Chris Richards, who's hilarious. So between the two of us, we can make almost anything funny. We start our show uh, 10 minutes in, we always have a comedy corner. So we put on a new comedian every day for 90 days. Today is our 90th day. We put on 90 new comedians. Wow. Every day we put on a new comedian. But we have people who will come in and talk about all types of things. Like every Tuesday is Vision Board Tuesday. So we have an expert come in and show their vision board. They're not an expert, just regular folks with a vision board. And mm -hmm. they talk about their vision board. I've talked about mine. Um, we have uh, a workout lady every 
Thursday and every Tuesday. For eight minutes, she work us out. And I'm not no spring chicken. I'm 63 years old. I don't feel a day over 59. But we go in the living room and we work out for eight minutes with our people. You know, every Wednesday, we have Wellness Wednesday. We have uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Uh, Lakeisha Lagree who come in and tell you some stuff to help make you more well. Every Thursday is de-stress with Dr. Sabrina. She tell you stuff to help you take the stress out your life. But throughout the whole show, there's going to be a, uh, somebody who's going to talk about health. Somebody can talk about comedy. Somebody might sing a song. We just had Shonda Prophet on, who's in The Lion King, been The Lion King for nine years. She came in and sang a song. Yesterday, we had a bodybuilder come in. He took his shirt off. My God. He had a chest look like a Buick grill. You hear me? Wow. He lived in that gym. We, we talked about him. I got another brother coming on who's a photographer. This is his book. Tomorrow, we're giving away two of these. This is his book. It's Things called Shades of Color. And he also photographs amazing pictures. But the ladies are going to love this because it's mostly these really fit men that he mm -hmm. takes these pictures of. We'll give two of these away tomorrow the hardback book we have all kind of artists that come to him this artist came in this book all of his books all of his stories in here the artworks are designed to go with well-known um uh gospel songs like um it's a visual interpretation of african-american spirituals that so he'll beautiful. come up with the spiritual whatever the spiritual is he'll put the spiritual on one side of the page and on the other side is an artwork he created to reflect what the spiritual meant or, or how it moved him. Oh, it's just, it's so amazing. It's so amazing. Are you giving right? one of those books away too? No, he did when he came. Mm -hmm. When he came, he gave one away. You know, wow. this man, this man, you can't have that. Um, <laughs> this brother, this artist came on and gave out two of his books. I this artist. Wow. It's identity theft about them stealing the black man's identity. One of my strongest pieces in here that I really love is um, this one about, he calls it the statue. Instead of the statue of liberty, he calls it the statute of limitations. Because mm. you know how they have treated us as a people here. And this is a sculpture he did. That's the front of it. Mm -hmm. And that's the back of it. Oh, my goodness. So he comes on and he talks about his art. You know, because we have four segments every day. And so we'll have an artist might come in. Um, let me see what else. I'm trying to see what else kind of people. I mean, we have folks drop in with just all kind of wonderful ideals and thoughts. And it's all about uplifting people. It's all about positivity. It's all about humor. It's all about joy. You know, I'll talk about what's going on with me. As you know, I'm doing my movie. It drops in six or well, seven days now. Next Wednesday, this is Tuesday. Now, now tell everybody Next about Wednesday. your movie. What's, what's your movie about, Mike? The movie is, first of all, it's called Holiday Heartbreak, okay? And Holiday Heartbreak is about a guy, me, who fooled around with too many women when he was younger, and he fooled around with the wrong one. And so she put a spell on him. Now, the, the woman, the voodoo woman who put the spell on me is played by Lisa Ray. You know Lisa Ray? Oh, absolutely. She's from Chicago, too. That's right, brother, Southside. There we go. <laughs> yes, she is. She just called me in the middle of my last interview because we're about to do another thing together. I'm going to show you something really quickly, quickly. Quickly, quickly, my friend. Now, Mike, this movie's going to be uh, straight to Netflix or it's coming to the theater? It go no, it goes to BET. Oh, wow. It's on BET and BET Her. Mm -hmm. So it's on both of those. Let me just show you a flyer from it really quickly, quickly, quickly. Okay, this is a flyer. It's called Holiday Heartbreak. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, and uh, it's Lisa Ray. My wife is there with the hat on. She played, that's AJ Johnson. She mm -hmm. played uh, Tyrese's mother in the movie Baby Boy. She's also mm -hmm. in the original House Party. One of the funniest guys on Two Feet is Country Wayne. So mm -hmm. Country Wayne plays a nemesis who's trying to kidnap my daughter, played by Mariam Bashir from The Shy. Also, uh, other great comedians are in there. Uh, Joe, um, I call him Uncle Joey. What is Joe's last name? Who's in DC area? He was the first mayor of Rap City. Joe Joe Claire Joe mm -hmm. Cleasy. So Joe Claire is in it. Lonnie B is in it. B Simone is in it. You know, so it's oh, a great that's story. that's a must watch. That's a must it's watch. A, it's a great great picture, and you know, it's a story about the woman put a spell on me. The woman doing turned thirty, mm -hmm. 
the spell is on her. It's going to break somebody. It's going to break her heart in a million pieces, just mm -hmm. like I did hers. So the spell hits her, and I got to go do some things mm -hmm. to get her out this spell. Meanwhile, because of the spell, she done fell in love with this fool, Country Wayne. So Country Wayne had turned her into a skeezer, and he's trying to marry her. So I got to break up the marriage. I got to break the, we got to break the thing. I can't tell you all of it, right. but it is exciting. It's really about karma. It's about what goes around, comes around. It's about you treat people a certain way. The universe will treat you a certain way. It's about love. It's about laughter. It is going to be a holiday classic. Oh, brother. I love it. I love it. It's going to be coming out in seven days. It comes out, yep, it comes out next Wednesday. It comes out on the December 16th oh, on wow. H on B E T and B E T Her. And it's called Holiday Heartbreak. Now, my morning show is every day. Just want to mention like that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Now, Mike, let me go to your question now. Um, how many uh, movies, you've done so many films in your career. About but, 36 uh, films. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Now, how many um, have you played uh, a lead role like this one? This is my first one. Oh, wow. This is the first time I've ever been number one on the call sheet. And that means the world to me. And it meant a lot to me because it frightened me because I didn't want to do a not good job. I want to make sure I do an excellent job because I know all my friends are going to be looking, especially my haters. They'll be like, I thought we killed him a long time ago. <laughs> but what is he what? doing starring? Huh? <laughs> but Mike, you know, you, I, I got to ask this, man, because I know the director, they had a script for you, but I know you did a lot of ad-libbing, didn't you not? No, sir. No, no sir. No, no, sir. Not on this one. This wasn't that kind of film. This mm. is a well-scripted film uh, by Tiffany Yancey. She wrote a fantastic story, and we're doing the story. We are living this story. But, you know, I am an actor. and People don't really understand it because they only see me do little funny, giggly parts. No one's ever seen me do something this serious and funny like this is. So it's just, it means the world to me. You know, the producer is Teresa, uh, is Tressa Smallwood. So a black woman owns this production company. It's her fourth film that she's done on a major screen. She did four shorts. Most of them have been for BET, Netflix, uh, 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 Hallmark. She's just off the chain. Beautiful. She's amazing. And she started out as a publisher. Actually, she started out as a teach as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And she was a teacher and she stopped and wrote a book and became a bestseller. So she decided to become a publisher. She published 162 titles. And then she sat in all these books. Why don't I start making them into movies? Mm -hmm. And then she stopped making them into movies. And now here she is on her eighth film. She's well-respected and she should be. She does an amazing job. She treats she treats her, she treats treats her, the cast and the crew with such love and affection and respect and dignity. She is awesome. But this is the year, and 21 is the year for the Black woman. A yes. Black woman mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. Vice President of the United States. <laughs> Run and tell that. That means Mercy. we just made America great again. Boom, right there, right there in your face. Hmm. Now, now you've been doing a lot of funny uh, skits that people I know have been watching on Instagram. Some of them um, you've been want, you've been speaking about like when you reenacted uh, the R. Kelly interview. That was one thing that you, oh my Yeah, goodness. that's a thing I'm trying to do. Um, I have another little, sketch comedy show I'm trying to put together. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna keep on playing Gail King, interviewing all kinds of people, <laughs> yeah. you know, but you saw our interview, you right. saw me interview R, R. Kelly as Gail King. It's sure. hilarious. Uh, oh, it's, you gotta check it out on his Instagram, Michael call you, because it's gonna have you crying. Now Mike, you're the, you're the person that I would never have wanted to sit behind me in school. You would have gotten me kicked out. I didn't cut up in class because I mostly wasn't there. Uh, I would cut up in the hallways. I would be outside the class. Like, Cowier! Cowier! I wouldn't be nowhere to be found. I'd be down at the gym or the lunchroom somewhere, get my fun on or in the theater because mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be an actor and I did all the major plays in my high school during my high school years. You know, I was always a lead, but not ever the lead. And after 34 films here, this is the first time I'm the lead. And, it and, is and, and some sincere congratulations, because I'm just so proud. First of all, he's our Chicago very own, and he's been in the industry for many, many years doing some, I mean, just some of the funniest things from Death right. Comedy Jam to um, The Morning Show to, what was that, LA Live you did as well? The I had, uh, yeah, LA Live, um, no, BET Live from LA. Yes, yes. That, that was an you, awesome talk show. So me and you go way back, man. Yeah, and I we love got, you all. Got, you always used to say, 
who in the hell left the gate left open? Left the gate open. You that's something know that a lot of people don't get, but they used to say that in Chicago all the time. When all these people come in your house, you say, wait a minute, everybody's here, but who in the... Wait, the this is one of the things we do on my show. We had a making a bread contest. Mm -hmm. I had to make bread for the first time. I How'd never made it was <laughs> it was crazy because I had never made it, but it came out the bread was really tasty, mm -hmm. but super hard. Okay, I couldn't cut it with a ridge knife, I couldn't cut it with a butcher knife. I finally just took a hammer and started whacking it, you know, and then <laughs> uh and the audience loved it. Then I had some honey butter, which I just took some butter and poured some honey in it. I dipped it in there. It was hard to chew, you have to use a good tea. But it was delicious. You know, we also did a contest to see who could make uh, the best Christmas wreaths. Do you mm -hmm. remember making Christmas wreaths? Yes, in high in, school, in you take class. a hanger, oh, right? You take a little yeah. hanger mm -hmm. and you, you make the round hanger. And, then, and all the stuff on this cost 99 cents each. The bells cost 99 cents. The little mm -hmm. reindeer cost 99 cents. The stuff around it, 99 cents. This cost $8. And mm -hmm. that's my Christmas wreath. Wait a minute, Michael. La, you, la, 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 la. You, you made all that. Except I minus the in, in about 15 minutes, I put this together. Oh, and wow. we had a, a, a contest. Me and my, my co-host, who's super funny, named Chris Richards. And we, we had a contest with the bread, too. And we, we constantly have contests uh, that you can win money on my show. You know what I'm saying? A lady just won Wednesday before Thanksgiving. She won $1,097 by guessing how much money is on our cuss jar. If oh, you wow. cuss on my show, if I cuss, I got to put money in the cuss jar. If you cuss on my show... I got to put money in the cuss jar. And every two, three months, we give the money away. But we don't mm -hmm. just give the money away. Other people throw in money, too. So mm -hmm. the day we're giving away the money, y'all, people say, okay, I'm putting in 20. I say, I'm putting in 50. Somebody say, I'm putting in 100. One guy put in 500. And all the all the audience, audience has to do is guess the closest to it. Oh, my goodness. That is so a, fun. A lady so guessed fun. one. It was great. She guessed $1,096. It was $197. She you got know, the cash money the next day. You know, Mike, the thing is that's so fascinating about you is that you're one of the last of the great, great comedians from um, the Red Fox era, the Richard Pryor era, Eddie Murphy, you know, that era of comedians that really know how to make you fall out laughing. I know you probably oh, yay. I know you probably in your humility don't see it that way. But for people, from my perspective, as soon as you see Mr. Michael Carrier on television, you stop everything to watch it because this man is gut rich and funny. I'm sure you. I, I, hope, I hope you're. I hope you're. You're right in that. I know that you've always felt that way about me. You have always been very kind and supportive of me. I'm mean, always, always said that. I mean, I don't care what happened. You was always like, Mr. Kai, I gotta get you on my show. Mr. Kai, you're so good. So you've always been supportive. I just want you to know, I appreciate that. No, I really, really, I mean that from my heart. I you're very welcome. You. But you know, long yeah. before I ever met you, I used to watch you on television and your jokes. See, your jokes. Um, always have our substance, you know, and then you would tell a story mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. you follow the story, you follow the story, then a punchline, you can't get off the floor. I'm sorry, God, you can't God get bless off the floor. God so, bless you. Yeah, yeah. And, and, so and I appreciate you make, it. You make Chicago, you know, um, just that much more proud. I have so many people, you know, when they hear that Michael Carr is on the app, ah, my comments are blowing up. I've got a lot of questions for you, Mike. But so many mm. people, um, I just have some, some, you know, so much support and love for you because, you know, you hear a lot of stuff about Chicago, but when you hear people like you uh, see what you're doing and continually doing for so many years, people just mm -hmm. love it as, as well as I am. And I'm one of your biggest fans. Thank you, man. I really appreciate you. Have you seen my morning show yet? I've heard it um, and I see it. Um, I saw clips on Facebook, but you got to let it show on a monitor. You got to come. You got to come and see it, man. I mean, it's every day on YouTube. And when you go to YouTube, you just put in the Michael Kaya Morning Show. The Michael Kaya Morning Show, 7 o'clock uh, uh, Pacific Standard Time. I promise it's I'll listen. an hour and a half of joy. You're going to love it. Oh, I'm sure. You're going to love it. Am I able to comment while you're on air? Absolutely. People oh, wow. comment, we talk, we go back and forth, we interact with each other. The mm -hmm. music from my show is even produced by an, uh, a gentleman from Nigeria, 20 years old, African brother, so cold, named Moonlight Africa. You know, I, today alone, where's the piece of paper? Today alone, people chimed in from uh, Arabia, Miami, East Africa, Croatia. The brother called in from Croatia and said, I am I am Muslim. You you are Christian? I said, yes, I'm Christian. He said, but we are still brothers. Oh, wow. Just out the blue. Barely can speak English. A brother from Brooklyn came in today, Atlanta, 
And uh, I mean, so we have people from around the world chiming in and we interact with each other, brother. I'm not just saying the show, I'm talking to them, I'm bringing them in, I'm getting them in on contests. You know, we have like, I told you Tuesday is vision board Tuesday. So people put up their vision boards. So people who are in the audience take turns. Each week we'll bring somebody from the audience and they'll bring their vision board and talk about it. Every Monday is liquor store hat Monday. Where's my liquor store hat? Don't, start, don't even start. Where's my liquor store hat? I don't see my <laughs> liquor store hat. I don't know where it is, but Monday is liquor store hat Monday. And you got to wear a hat. It looked like it came from the liquor store. I, it must be in the other room, you know? And so people send in their pictures of them wearing liquor store hats, you know? And so it's like fun every day because I wanted to create a place where people can go every day and laugh and pray. Because oh our goodness. situation right now, when you got COVID and the orange hair food playing like he's president, refusing to leave, when you got racism at an all time high, when you got poverty at an all time high, then, uh, people need to laugh That's to right. keep from punching somebody in the face, brother. That's you know, right. so these people who call ourselves comedians, we are the heels of the world, man. Uh, comedy is healing. If you can laugh through a thing, you can get through a thing. You know, so we are here to heal the world, man. And that's what my show is all about. It's just about joy, no matter who the who the guest is. You know, what guest is talking about what thing. At the end of the day, you're going to be laughing through my show, no matter what the guests say, because I'm a fan of comedic angle. Okay, today we have Chef Babette. Chef, no, that was yesterday. That was Monday. Chef Babette is 70. Body tight. You can hit her on the stomach with a quarter. Get back five nickels, okay? And she is a vegan chef. She turned 70 yesterday and came in with a photo shoot to show her in her bikini. She was off the chain. And we 70? talked a few minutes about eating good food, having good health, and looking fine and flat at 70. We also had a woman named Erin Goddess Peace. And she speaks about spirit and, and, and meditation and life. And Rakeem, the guy I told you, took the shirt off. The boy took this shirt off. I'm telling you, it was crazy how his body was cut. The women was going crazy. Wait, he's in Atlanta. I'm heading to the airport, you know. To, uh, <laughs> today, today we had Johan Jones. Cold, cold young brother. Go on and see Johan Jones on Instagram. He does these one minute video bits he get over a million views he's off the chain well i'm in a new movie that he's shooting called you hitting that well it was a series called you hitting that now he's doing a movie version called you married that and i play his girlfriend's daddy what? okay so johan came on today and talked about filmmaking i'm just showing you today's show dawn did the vision board she worked us out and then we have a guy named dr lamar price if y'all have any ailments at all trust me you want to talk to dr Lamar Price. He's a holistic practitioner who does iridology. He looks in your eye and he could take, look that circle in your eye and tell you everything. I'm telling you everything that's going on with, with you. He could tell you if you have high cholesterol, you have early onset diabetes, he can tell you if you got gas. He can tell you everything going on from looking in your eye and then he can show you how to turn it around through holistic medicine. And he ain't trying to charge you for it. He sends you to go get the supplements you need. He ain't making no money on that. He just wants to get people healthy. He used to be a doctor, but he quit doing medical, the medical field because there's only five reasons to be a doctor, M-O-N-E-Y. So he is <laughs> instead a naturopath and he helps you naturally heal yourself. That's yesterday's show. Tomorrow's show, uh, Carly Smiley is a, one of the members, one of the people we call the Calia clan, people who come on every day. She handles leather goods. She's going to talk to us about her leather goods. Stephen S. Williams is the one who made that book I just showed you. Does he show you the book with the with the bodies in it? Right, right, right. Okay, he he's the he's the photographer for that. He's coming in and he's giving away two of those books tomorrow, and he's going to talk about his photography and his story, how he got there with, through the help of Regina King. Uh, one na lady named Shadina Sabad is coming on. She has a thing called Black Man. We hear you. And she have these forums where black men can say what they're feeling and what they're going through. And then I also got a DJ named DJ Dave. He be spinning on the ones and twos. And then I got VJ. VJ comes on and he talks about sports, you know, but tomorrow is Wednesday, right? So mm -hmm. Wednesday is Wellness Wednesday. So Dr. Lakeisha Legree comes on and tells you something to help you get well. You can ask questions. So every day is something like that, you know? 
Wow, so that is do. that you have some really great guests that's doing some great things, positive yeah. stuff, Mike. People yeah. need to hear that and see that. I promise you, I'm gonna tune in tomorrow and I'm gonna comment as well. Mike, you have a puppet of yourself behind you. Is that a puppet of you? That's not of me. That's that's Roscoe. Who's Roscoe? That's Roscoe. Well, Roscoe is the host of my uh my reading show. So every every uh so every um Thursday at eleven o'clock on Instagram, Thursday. 11 o'clock, I read to the children. It's called Reading with Mr. Mike. One question. How come your lips move more than mine? <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, so he's the, he's the host. He's the host of the children's show. So every Thursday on Instagram, I sit in my living room and I read to the children. So I'll do one children's book. Then I'll do two poems by Shel Silverstein. Then I'll break out some puppets and talk to the kids for a few oh minutes. Oh my goodness, wow. Because Mike- our kids, man, is going through this too. Right. Y'all need to know that. They can hear TV. Y'all leave it on CNN, constantly negative news. They hear that fool Trump saying ignorant, lying stuff every day. They hear about COVID. They hear people dying. And you don't even know because you got the TV on. They over there playing, but they hear it. Mm -hmm. So we got to be here to remind them, kids, you okay. We got you. Mama ain't going to die. Daddy ain't going to die. You ain't going to die or get sick because we got you and we got God. You know, so we got to do something, give something to the kids. So I read with them every day and I encourage parents to read to their kids. But most importantly, I am, and I encourage kids to, I encourage parents to get their children to read to them. Because the children do the reading, now they're building their reading and their vocabulary, which makes them stronger humans when they march off into life. And it creates the greatest connection between them and their parents. So that's what I do on Thursdays, you know. Wow. Now, now um, Mike, you have a couple, you have time for a couple questions. You have about three people want to ask you some questions. I'm cool. I'm okay. good. I'm okay, good. very good. Now, Mike, um, this is from Philip from uh, Pennsylvania. He asks, can you name a list your five funniest comedians? Not at all. I could name five comedians, but it wouldn't be fair to say they're the funniest because there's so many people who are different. You know, so like, like for instance, somebody asked me between Mike Epps and Kevin Hart, who's the funniest. I can't say that. They're both funny, but in a different kind of a way, Mm -hmm. you know, so you can't say what's the best between the apple and the orange. They Mm -hmm. both are tasty fruits, but they're different things, man. You know, but some of my favorites, Tony Roberts, it's ridiculous. They got a guy named Tony Roberts. He's so funny, you get sick. You laugh and you throw up. He is <laughs> crazy, crazy funny. You know, this guy I'm working with here, Country Wayne, very funny. I think, actually, Cat Williams is about one of the funniest people on the planet. Mm-hmm. Cat Williams is not just funny, he's a genius. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. an absolute genius, man. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's a lot of just really, really great comedians, man. If you watch my show, you'll see some because we put a comedian on every morning. We've had 90 different comedians over the last 90 days of shows. You know, every day it's a new one. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that is amazing. That is amazing. Now, um, speaking of that, this is Sarah from Virginia. Sarah wants to Sarah. know- Sarah wants to know how can, how can you have a, how can she have a comedian to refer over to your show? How do you pick them in other words? I can she refer one, just go and DM me. Just go to my Instagram, go to my DM and say, hey, I have a great comedian. I'd love to get him on your show. Uh, and just leave your name and number and I'll call you and we talk about it. And, okay. You know, it's even better if you could send me a link of him doing his stuff. Because mm-hmm. I'm going to have to see him. They right. can't come on because you say they're funny. No, <laughs> they got to show me the funny because we guarantee our guys. So right. every morning there's a three minute comedian who's mm-hmm. going to be funny else he gonna have a long walk back to the car because I'm gonna tie him up. Once he gets off stage, I'm gonna talk about him like a dog. I'm gonna talk about him like he stole something from me. So, so they got to be funny when they come on. We have men and women. We have every race, you know. Uh, it's really awesome. So that's how you do it. Just DM me if you have any questions for me. You could DM me or you can uh, you can go to my Instagram, which is my name, Michael underscore Collier. I answer all questions myself too. I don't have no assistance. I do it. Well, yes. That's about having a yes mentality. Can you know why? Can you know why? Can you know why? <laughs> now, now, Mike, this, is, this, this last question is from, this last question is from Jerry from Baton Rouge. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Jerry Please ignore that chicken. That chicken's ridiculous. I'm sorry. Says, Go ahead. Well, congratulations on your success on your new movie, your radio show. Um, Thank you. And how are you able to stay humble in the midst of all your success? I thought I was arrogant. Ah, damn it, I missed it. 
<laughs> oh, okay. Um, I owe everything to Father God. Everything I have, every breath I take, everything that I carry, every piece of clothing I wear, I owe to God. And everything I have is a loan to me, including my life. My life is just a loner. It's not mine. It belongs to Father God. And so I walk every morning with an attitude of gratitude. I wake up with an attitude of gratitude. God woke me up this morning and he didn't have to do that. Mercy. I'm very, I'm very grateful to God. So every day I get up, first thing I do is I pray. Well, I brush my teeth first because I don't like to talk to God with a dirty mouth. But <laughs> after I pray, then I talk to God, but my, my prayers are prayers of gratitude. They're not prayers of begging. Oh, God, please give me this. Please give me that. I don't need to beg God for anything. God wants me to have what I want to have. That's why it's on me to set my intentions. The intention you set is what's going to happen. That's why some people say, oh, the universe has cursed me or the universe has blessed me. The universe don't do either one. The universe responds to your vibrations. Whatever you send into the universe, the universe sends back to you. So that's why I try to send love, light, peace, power, joy everywhere I go. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Light, 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 energy, laughter, joy. Only positivity comes from me. You can't beat a complaint out of me because I'm too grateful you know Mercy. and so yeah I just send that out and I know that's what the universe just keeps sending to me so here I am I'd have bought a new house and I ain't got a job no more it don't do you see me worrying <laughs> I ain't panicked at all because I got God you know and God gave me all these gifts and 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 connected me with great people you know so that's how I try to stay humble because I know this ain't my shit this belongs to God and so I'm happy I'm now, just happy to be able to dance within it, you know. Now, Mike, this yeah. question is from me. I'm noticing mm -hmm. you have a star in the behind you. Now, where is that located in Hollywood? Where can I go see your star? From the that Walk star, of Fame? the star from the Walk of Fame? Yes. The only place you're going to see it is right there on my wall. Right there. Oh! <laughs> That's it right there. I ain't got no star. I am a star, but I mm -hmm. ain't got no star, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's funny that you mention that because right now we're trying to raise the money to get a star for Marla Gibbs. You know the stars now cost fifty thousand dollars. Really? Yeah, you Marley. gotta buy that thing yourself, and it costs fifty thousand dollars to place that star out there. So we're raising and trying to raise money right now because Marla Gibbs should have a star out. There. Absolutely, she's she one. She should of, have a star. That is, mm -hmm. that is insane. And you know, some actors and um and performers, if you go down Hollywood, you turn the corner down Vine or whatever, they got two stars. You well, some people you. have done enough stuff to do two. Yes, some people yes. have done enough things to do too. And then again, you know, who pays for that? Because like if you, some, some organizations, some companies you with, your company gonna pay for that, you know? If you're a Steve Harvey, you know, and they're making a hundred million dollars on you over the year, they gonna come up with that 50,000 mm -hmm. and make sure you get your star. But if you don't have a big company behind you like that, then it's on you. You gotta get your own money, man, and make that happen, you know? So we're trying to do things to get it for her because Marla Gibbs is a treasure. She's just a wonderful being. In fact, I'm going to call her and her daughter this evening after I talk to you. You know, you know, you know Mike, uh, first of all, um, I'm not going to hold you much longer because I really appreciate, you know, and you kind of touched on something that um, I like to mention on air just to, um, mm -hmm. first of all, I love the Sherrod Show. One of the main things we do here in the Sherrod Show is give people like yourself flowers while you're still living. It's nothing more upsetting to me when you see a blurb on a, a TMZ or something about somebody who died and they were 97 years old. And that's all mm -hmm. they talk about when nobody honored them while they were still a living. But my thing mm -hmm. is um, from some of the biggest stars that are still here, like I said, Frida Payne, Mel Carter. Um, we have uh, Charles Wright. I had the impressions on the show. Just had the Isley brothers, the men. Nice. You know, people who nice. have, have done so many wonderful things um, and have set trends and even had to go through civil rights movements and stuff, um, you know, before some of us was on this planet. But you 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 honor them, even if they don't have a big hit and had one in 20 years or whatever, you just you find them and honor them because they've done so much for black people. Don't you agree, Mike? I think that's a beautiful thing to do, but I always have fresh cut flowers at my home. So I don't need no flowers. If you could send me the money, just send the money. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, um, uh, you know, that Chicago humor gets me all the time, man. I'm telling you, people don't know it, man. Chicago knows how to crack some jokes, just like we know how to do the be the greatest president that God ever created. Look, <laughs> I'm really rich. Oh I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Wow. 
My, where do you get one of those? Wear it to pay. It's my hair. I swear. Some white lady sold it to me in Beverly Hills. I love China. I just sold an apartment for fifteen million dollars to somebody from China. Wow. Uh, I was sitting in a restaurant in Beverly Hills having breakfast, and a little old white lady next to me said, "I got some. I got some Donald Trump pins." And I said, "Bitch, who wants those?" And she said, "But look, our leaders are stupid." Our politicians are stupid. I said, I'll take one. <laughs> and I've had fun with this ever since he's been in office. We will have so much winning if I get elected that you may get bored with winning. Are you bored with winning yet? No, oh my goodness. This I boy is the last fool. <laughs> he, and I'm so glad he's gone. I don't know what to do. I watch news just to see some stupid stuff he's going to say. He's going to say something stupid every 15 minutes. You can set your watch. By the next time, he's going to say some ignorant shit. Just give him 15 minutes. He will go, oh, he just said it again. He's so stupid. I'm so Mike, glad he gone. <laughs> now, Mike, let me do a quick recap because people are wanting to know they're trending and asking. Again, um, your movie's coming out in um, a week next Wednesday. You can watch it on BET. What's the title of it again? Let's give them the date. The date's December 16th. The title, my friend, is Holiday Heartbreak. I broke some hearts. And it ended up trying to break me. You know, Holiday Heartbreak. Starring yours truly, Michael Kaya, starring Lisa Ray, AJ uh, Johnson, uh, Lonnie B, who's a, a big, big, big uh, internet uh, star, uh, Joe Claire, uh, uh, Country Wayne, uh, uh, um, just a lot of great stars, but more than the stars. The story itself is magnificent. It's shot beautifully, and um, and you guys are gonna love it. It's gonna be oh, a I can't classic. wait. I can't and my, wait. My morning show, the Michael Kaya Morning Show. People, come and see me. Uh, <laughs> all you do is go to YouTube and put in the Michael Kaya Morning Show. Make sure you subscribe as well and come see the show. And you can always reach me uh, on Instagram under my name, Michael underscore Callier. I answer every message myself. So feel free to write me. That and man, if someone wants that trailer, they can send me their name and number. Sorry to cut you off. They can send me your name and number to my DM. I'll send you the trailer because I want you to post it everywhere. And absolutely. And this is going to be posted. Um, you're going to see it on your screen as well, the trailer for it. I got this a beautiful Christmas. We're all looking for some positivity. And this is the movie to watch, um, as well as tune into um, Mr. Michael Collier's uh, radio show, which is going to be tomorrow. I'm tuning in. I'm going to comment. I want to get some good laughs as well. Mike, you're such a blessing. You're such a great Thank friend. Thank you. Appreciate you so much for stopping by the Sherrod Show. Hope you enjoy your rest of your evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. Sir, and tomorrow on the Sherrod Show, we're going to have the Shy Lights are going to stop by and sing and talk about Come on music, now. And music as well. I'm Sherrod. Until the next time, enjoy this episode. Stay tuned and tune in to Essence Television Network. Deuces! Deuces.